All right. Well, welcome everybody. Again, I'm TJ with Shopbot Tools, and I want to go over today some uh, general practices, introduction kind of stuff for cutting plastics. Like I was saying before, uh, we have a lot of a lot of new customers out there that are cutting a lot of plastic versus uh, how it used to be, where most of our customers were were cutting wood. So uh, we're going to get into uh, several slides here, show you some pictures and some information, and then at the end, any questions that we have, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, remember, you know, with us in Shopbot, you can always, you know, call in, find us online on our forum. If you're looking for questions or you got anything you need to need help with, that's what we're here for, and we definitely take pride in our our tech support and availability to you. So, with that being said, let's see what we can get into for cutting plastics. All right. And for any of you guys that have met me yet, you know I like food, so that is going to be my. Uh, uh, analogy today is changing, uh, connecting our plastic to uh, food as a <laughs> combo. <laughs> so, um, right here at Shopout, you know, we're cutting five or six different types of plastics. So, um, as far as the different types of plastics that are out there, there are there's just thousands of them. So, kind of think of think of bread. Um, this is a good way to think about how many different plastics there are. And the reason I'm really wanting you to realize there's so many different plastics is you take one feed and speed with the tool bit and put it in plastic A, it cuts fine. You put it in plastic B, it snaps a bit immediately. So you have to know your different plastics. So today I'm hoping to give you enough guidelines to start feeling comfortable and safe on cutting some different plastics. So, so like bread, plastic has a few main ingredients, that core core ingredients that make it up. And then depending on, you know, how, just like bread, you know, how it's cooked, the size of it, uh, the different textures that are in it. And the same thing with plastics. There's a lot of different additives that can go into different plastics. There's uh, They're formed different ways. There's different heats that they're brought up to when they're being, uh, whether they're being extruded or molded or what might be. There are just thousands, infinite different combinations of plastic out there so it's not like you can just take you know one bit and and, and it's going to work for all plastics it's just like wood you know there's there's except there's a hundred times more <laughs> different uh types but um just so you know we're going to get into a few different types of plastics so there are two general ways to class a plastic um there's a couple you know this one here is the you know this would be like your textbook way of doing it uh, where it's saying a thermoplastic it can be melted and returned to its original state so think about that as like an ice cube so some of the plastics we'll be talking about today like a HDPE um, that's actually made out of uh, recycled plastics plastic bags and caps and bottles and they can heat it up and then return it back to a plastic state in a form of a 4 by 8 sheet whatever it might need to be so, and please, at the end of this, um, at the end of this training, if you'd like uh, a copy of this PowerPoint to use in your classroom or to view later on, um, I'll give you my full name so you can send a non-refundable fifty-dollar check to me. So, <laughs> um, thermosets. Now, these are more like uh, they're formed one way. They're cooked, they're made into the product, and then they can't really be changed. And you'll see this a lot with like your plexiglass, um, acrylics, and different epoxies. You know, once they're put in a certain state, that they can't be, you know, reformed back. So you got a thermoplastic and a thermoset. So think, just think of set. Once it's set, it's set up for life. Versus a thermoplastic, which can be, you know, altered back. Um, the way I typically do it, though, is forget all these big words and all these fancy definitions. Is there's a hard plastic and a soft plastic? Um, that, that's kind of how I do it. If I, if it if I can take like a two inch wide strip by say maybe 24 inches long, and I can bend it and um, and it snaps, that's a harder that's a hard plastic. If it bends and just creases and it doesn't. Uh, break it's a soft plastic and that's kind of a simple way of explaining it for you know people that are just getting into it or just cutting plastic once in a while but uh, there's more of your formal definition there thermoplastics and thermoset so we actually cut a lot of plastic 
uh, on our machine in the back, and that's what's pictured here. This is our uh, this is a 96 by 60 cutting surface, and some of you are thinking that has a goofy uh, dust shroud on it. Well, if you notice along the back wall there, you'll see there's different tools. This is an automatic tool changer of a shop bot. So there's eight different heads back there with eight different bits, and that bit that uh, the shop bot will go back there and drop off and pick up whatever bit is being called up in the file. And this is great for a production setting like we have in the back where one of these files might run and have three or four bits. Well, we'd have to pay a guy to stand right there and change bits, and that's all he'd be doing. So right now, with it automatically changing, if I was to turn that camera around 180 degrees, you'd see that's where the um, ShopBot buddies are being built. And Steve stands there and assembles the buddies, keeps his eye on this. He's only about four feet away from where this picture was taken. And he doesn't need to go over there unless he needs to change the material. So it, it, it really frees up a man and lets him go and be building and assembling the uh, um, buddies. And then if you look underneath, you're wondering what all these plumbing pipes are for. And that's because we use a, a, a hold down. We have a vacuum hold down on that machine. And a lot of the plastics that we use, we're cutting out big big parts. Um, so just off the top of my head, some of the parts that we cut on our shop out as well. One right now you can see that plastic dust shroud that goes on there, the little dust skirt. That's the part that we cut. Uh, all of our desktop enclosures we cut and bend with a certain type of plastic. Uh, we cut um, a lot of our safety guards. We cut um, our old wire uh, wire cables, there's, there's a lot of different parts and the big thing right now that's going on is HandyBot. So HandyBot is a material we'll be talking about that makes a HandyBot here in a little bit and that machine back there is cutting a HandyBot parts as we speak because I just walked by it before I came up here. So there's different types of plastics. Plastics come in different sizes, shapes and they don't always come flat either. You can get round stock. Uh, you know, there's piping and stuff that comes in plastic too, made out of uh, these same materials. So, all right, I'm going to walk you through about the five main ones here that we use here at Shopbot. And um, you know, please feel free if you got a question, and um, I'll try to get through these here for you so you can understand a little bit more about cutting plastics. So along the top. The, is what this plastic is actually called. This is a, it's a polycarbonate. That is the type of plastic this would be classified as. It's, it's classified as a polycarbonate. Uh, a brand name uh, that we use here is called Lexan. And you can see that in the back. It says a Lexan sheet. So Lexan is no different than saying, you know, Pepsi or Coke. It's just a brand name to something we would call soda pop. So there are, again, hundreds of different companies out there that are making polycarbonate sheets. The one that we just used right here in-house is, is brand name Lexan. And um, at the end of the, to the training, remind me, I will show you, I'll tell you a couple different places where you can get plastics from. Um, it's it's not something that you just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your hardware store and get. A lot of these have to come from an actual plastic place. Uh, and, and there is a lot of them that you can get online. And you don't need to always get these in 4 by 8 sheets. You can have them cut you and send you samples uh, or, or smaller pieces as well. So let's talk about a polycarbonate here. So Lexan. Uh, first of all, let's talk about some of the examples what we use it for at ShopBot, and you can see in the picture that down in the bottom left there, that is a little maze that I cut. So I've got some V carving in it, and it's a maze that has a BB in it. So I, t I chose to use the Lexan for that project because one, it's obviously clear, and two, because it's easy to uh, glue together. It's e it's easy for me to take the two pieces. There's one piece that had all the uh, maze parts cut out, and then the other part had the V carving of the text, and I went into that all sandwiched inside with a BB, so the BB could run the the, the maze. And for us, there's a there's a little um, glue that it does not stick to your hands or anything. It only sticks to the polycarbonate, so it's real easy for me to glue those up. It's fast and easy, so that's why I chose that material for that. Um, any of you that have an older machine, before we had uh, 
e-chains, you have something called a wire guide, which is a big, long, it's like a six-foot long piece of uh, Lexan that um, that's what all your wires and stuff are attached to above your uh, above your spindle or your router. So when your machines move it back and forth, that thing bends and it, and it um, it's not going to break. So um, the other thing we cut, you can see there is there's two different dust foots. There's the dust foot for the uh, automatic tool changer on the left that doesn't have a skirting on it. It's just just cut and ready to go. And then the one on the right is the desktop dust skirt, and that one already has the skirt on it. So why do we choose why do we choose these to, to make these out of polycarbonate? Well, let's start up with the pros. One, it has a high impact strength. So it, it's it's really a very, very strong material. Um, two, the is the high and low temperature resistance? You know, your shop bots are being used all over the world with all different uh, with all different um, temperatures and humidities. It's thermoformable. Uh, cons, though, it does not take heat evenly. So we've got a couple parts here that we have to heat and bend, and um, this is not one that takes a heat real well. If you uh, applied heat to this and that you got it warm and as soon as you remove the heat it's really going to dissipate real fast uh, where um, on a different material like an acrylic or something would hold it. Uh, you need to score it to bend it meaning you need to put some kind of a V cut in it so it's a very hard material it's, it's hard to bend and cut that way. Um, just so uh, you can see some other examples down below uh, CDs and DVDs are made out of it, safety glasses, and uh, if you have a thick enough piece like you see at your banks or your gas stations, that, that's, that's a polycarbonate, that, that's bulletproof. You know, it, you know, obviously if you had an eighth inch uh, thick piece of it, it's not going to be bulletproof, but they've got that inch thick uh, uh, clear polycarbonate, and that's what protects the employees that are behind those, those walls. So that is... Um, really a par polycarbonate in a nutshell and like I said we use the brand Lexan and you can see on the back too where it says Sabic S-A-B-I-C that is the company that we get our Lexan through so there are again a lot of different brand names out there you could just go to Google and type in polycarbonate sheets and, it, and find out some of the different brands all right, now here's where we're going to get into doing uh, words that are bigger than my uh, uh, <laughs> vocabulary. You got more than three syllables in it. I'm going to stay away. So this is, I mean, this would probably be the one thing that you could get at um, at Home Depot or Lowe's. is It's just a straight plexiglass. Um, plexiglass again, though, is just a brand name. This polymethyl methylene is the actual chemical you know compound name for the this material but uh, two of the brands that we use here is plexiglass and acrylate so I've been a big fan of acrylate these last few years of the shop bot because I can get it in so many different colors and when I mean colors I mean it's clear still but it has a tint to it so like right there on the right you see the shop bot sign well, that is a bluish tint piece of uh, acrylate, and it just has a white light below it. I mean, there's different ways you could get that light. You could have a blue light with clear stuff, but I was able to actually, I had a clear bulb, and I said, I want to make the shop pop blue um, sign to fit, so I was able to get a, a tinted um, piece of acrylate and then that one was nice because I went right to their website said the size that I need and you know they just the blank size that I need and they sent me just that I didn't need to go buy a full 4 by 8 sheet of it so um, so let's see here what are some of the pros of this uh, it, it can withstand pressure uh, so you will see a lot of like fish aquariums and um, stuff that has water behind it uh, used the other thing is a whole corrosive material. So when I was putting this together, I looked up a few things, and like this is what they'll 
you know, they'll put a lot of medical waste in and different material that is actually corrosive or would, you know, eat away at um, different plastics or metals. So uh, it'll, it's actually a good material for holding corrosive stuff. Um, if you use just the stri straight poly here, this, it, it is, um, it, it, it is very brittle. If you were to try to push this in your hand together and snap it, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to break and uh, it's very sharp and it shatters. So I wouldn't recommend using it, um, you know, things that can take a chance of snapping and, and cutting you. So uh, be careful with that. Um, and like I said before, I, I liked it because I get a lot of different colors with it, and um, people use it for window panes. And like I said, there's the the Monterey Bay Aquarium uses it for um, you know for their for their walls. All right, impact modified acrylic, and this has been kind of my favorite one lately. I've been cutting a lot of this stuff, and um, I, I like this stuff because it's easy to cut and it and it's really hard to break. So um, impact modified acrylic. So what they've done now, again, think back to your piece of bread. When they went to bake this acrylic, your typical acrylic that we were just looking at is pretty brittle. Well, now they put some sort of an additive in there, and they've made it so it's impact modified. And what that means is, like, it, it could take a take a blow and like like if you punched it or you threw a ball at it or hit it with a bat it's not going to break and shatter uh, so that it is an added cost to do that but um, that is something that this is good for so for me um, if I look down here at our examples uh, this little game here on the left is a steel ball that goes inside these two pieces of plastic. And then to get it out, you got to squeeze the plastic. Well, squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, eventually, if it was to break, uh, this one's not going to shatter. It's just going to kind of um, distort the color and, and just kind of bend, and, 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 and it won't shatter. Where if I just used the regular acrylic, and you were bending that with your hands, and eventually it snapped. It could be sharp and cut you. So that's why I chose that plastic for uh, for this project. Uh, next to it, you see this is a switch, and that's a that's a switch for the desktop. That's actually your power switch. And um, the reason I have it positioned like that is you can see that it's a C shape. So when we cut that, we cut it flat. And we just have the hole in it for the switch, but then what we do is we heat that up and bend it, and then it holds its position. So uh, impact modified acrylic is a really good uh, material to use for heating and bending. It'll hold the heat after you take the um, heating source off it, and it'll allow it to bend. So, um, and then again, once it cools, you hold, you bend it around your form, and when it cools, it stays in that position where other materials would not stay or bend as evenly. So, um, and then if you look over here too, to the right, you see the dust foot and it, for the desktop, no skirt on it yet, the black skirt's not on, and this is the top portion of it, where the bottom portion is the one that has a skirt, I'm sorry. This one here, being in a, a spot where it, it needs a little bit of a flex, uh, they've went ahead and used this uh, uh, Duraplex material so that that can flex. And it's real easy to glue up. So, um, And again, we get that in a pipe and a flat form right there. So that's where that is. So. Um, let me just kind of go over some of these pros again. We've got a sign grade, uh, medium impact. So it, uh, we have one, one gentleman here who um, has been with ShopBot for probably since the beginning, and that's what he does as he cuts windshields out on his machine at home for golf carts and ATVs and and different um, you know recreational vehicles because the you know these won't shatter if something hits them. You hit a tree when you're off roading or uh, you got somebody driving a golf ball at you, cart, it's not going to shatter. So, um, And then, again, the cons, not a whole lot here, but 
the added cost because you're adifying, add, adding a, um, a chemical to make it impact modified. It, it does have a sharp edge. Watch out for that. Um, unless you're using like a profile bit. So just a quick thing on bits. Um, you know, just your regular end mill. Um, your regular end mill um, will cut this, but it's going to leave a sharp edge. Where if you get a profile bit, which does the cutting through and a little round over, you know, then you're okay with it. But like that moose there that I've got pictured, I just did him with an eighth inch end mill, and I just kind of went and checked the edges with my hand before I was give it to somebody to to manhandle. I want to make sure the edges are are clean enough so if you have a nice sharp bit you're good but otherwise watch out but it does scratch easily that was one thing that I found is a big con of it so when you do get this stuff it comes with a plastic uh, liner on both sides and this is where I need to <laughs> make sure I add a note to pull the top thing off I don't know how many of you have ever done that in here where I'll, um, so this plastic and most of these plastics still come with um, like a protective layer uh, on both sides so one time, and as long as the protective layer is on there tight, it's not a big deal. You can cut it. But if you ever get that protective layer, it's a thin, thin film, like a back of a fruit roll-up. If that's ever loose or hanging above, and then your bit goes over that, and your bit will suck that up inside of it, and it makes a shrill that will scare the living daylights out of you, and it'll pull it all off the material for you. But what it will do as well is gum up your bit and, and wreck your bit, and uh, it's, it's, it's a pain to get back off. So for me, when I'm doing materials like this, I'll leave the bottom one on, the one that's against my spoil board, because there's no sense. It's just not going to scratch or anything down there. It's going to help protect it. And then the top one, I'll just pull right off, so um, I don't have to worry about it getting caught up in the uh, up in the spindle. Especially if you got uh, parts like the moose here, where it's a bunch of little antlers, fingers, and stuff in there. Um, if you just had a big rectangular pieces and it was on there tight, I'd say go ahead and leave it. But uh, uh, so, um, Tom asked a question here. Can this be used for wire guides for the shop bot since it's, you know, since it's able to heat and bend? I would sure think so, uh, Tom. We just don't get it in that thickness. Uh, the, th the thickness we use for our wire guides is, is uh, like a quarter inch or something where this is more like a, just under an eighth of an inch. And since we're already using that, quarter inch for the desktop foots I think that's why you know just it's less materials to have on hand we don't have if we can get as many parts as we can out of one material we don't have to stock as much so I don't see why you couldn't um, all right so impact modified acrylic and, and the brand that we use here is Duraplex and again that's just because that's what's available to us and and that's what we use here all right so UHMW ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So, or I like to refer to as just UHMW. <laughs> um, the brand name that we use is called Tyvar. Again, if you did a Google search for UHMW, you're probably going to find a lot of different um, types of 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 uh, UHMWs, but again, what we use available here is Tyvar, and been real happy with it. So the beauty of this thing is, uh, this is probably the easiest to cut. It's pretty hard to screw this up to, to get a bad cut on this stuff. It, it it's just a it's easy, easy to cut material. Um, use it for drilling holes. Use it for um, use it for. Uh, we actually use it a lot of it on our five axes right now because it's so smooth. So it's both a pro and a con if you wanted to look at it. That material is very, very smooth. And I, when I was putting this together too, I looked up uses for it. And um, especially down in the south where they don't get ice, they'll actually use sheets of this as um, as the flooring for an ice rink. So you actually put your ice skates on and it can skate on this stuff. So that will tell you it can definitely take. Uh, some strength uh, in, in individual spots but uh, it, it's very smooth it is very very smooth so that can work for your advantage or against your advantage and just to kind of give you a scene set of that picture um, what that is is just it's a versus having wheels with bearings and stuff this is just a big long piece of the UHMW and our 
power stick comes off our five axis machine and slides uh, above it and back and forth on it and it doesn't wear on the aluminum or it doesn't wear on the UHMW because it's such a slick material so um, it is expensive I want to say it's three four hundred bucks for a four by eight sheet of it and apparently that's what they use for doing um, replacement parts in your hip or your neck or joints all right HDP high density this stuff is, is what we are cutting right now back here and this is the HandyBot stuff so HDPE is the short name for it and um, the two brands that we cut back there are Rochling and King um, just to get, give you a little bit, the, the handy box, which is the green over here, we're actually cutting it out of blue, but the example I had was green. Uh, that's by the Rochling. Um, King, that's another brand, and they've been another one that I've been real happy with online. I can go on there and request a sample size, or, you know, purchase a sample size. Maybe I only want a, you know, a one-inch thick piece that's two foot by two foot because I'm going to make a custom cutting board. Uh, they'll cut you, you know, the material size and send it to you. And they've got different grades of it on there. They've got a food grade, uh, and, and they've got so many different colors on there. So um, that's king. This stuff is kind of expensive too. Uh, I want to say if you're only buying one full sheet, it's probably 300 bucks. If you're going to buy it in bulk, you can probably get it down to 150 or so. But uh, again, this stuff is really easy to cut. It's soft. It's very soft stuff. And um, we use it here on a couple different projects. So one, uh, you see, I used it here uh, just as a quick sign where it says ShopBot. And the reason I'm showing you that is just to show you that you can get it in multicolor. So as soon as I cut through the white, it exposed the blue and made it a quick, easy, simple sign. So this would be a nice outdoor type sign that uh, would just hose off as far as maintenance if you wanted to keep it clean. Uh, the one up in the front, that is a, it's a little gear. Uh, this is, comes from a, uh, like a, there's like a children's type museum place here in town that they make these little gears and stuff and kids would come up and they'd be on a, on a plaque or something and they'd twist it and there's different sized gears they can pick and place. But that's another one that's, uh, that's another HDPE that is, it's multicolored. So it, it has uh, red on the top, yellow in the middle, and then if I flipped it over, you see it's red on the bottom again. So, uh, and then again over there on the right, that's just an example showing a joint that we have where the bolts come in from the right. Your little hardware fasteners are insert down in here, and um, that's the HDPE that makes up our handy bots. So, um, People use this stuff for fuel tanks. This is actually what a lot of the 3D printer filament is. And it's it's nice because this is the stuff that, like I said, it can be heated up and, and, and then brought back in. So you can take a lot of your scrap from this and actually take it back to some of these places. I know uh, there's a place here in town called Piedmont Plastics, and they're a plastic distributor. And if you took and took all your scraps into this material, like you keep your good parts, but you have all the leftovers that would normally go in the dumpster, they'll actually give you a credit for poundage on how much of that you bring back, because they're able to take that and reheat it up, you know, send it off to their factory or wherever, and reheat that up and re-melt it down into whatever form that they need again. So this stuff is made out of all kinds of different plastics, bottle caps and plastic bags and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, there's definitely a recyclable quality to this. There's, you know, there's different grades of there's different grades of HDPE. There's just that many different flavors out there. But this is a real nice stuff to cut, real easy to cut, and um, it's been a uh, been a real nice one to have around here to mess around with. So let's talk a little bit about the soft and hard plastics. So I've just given you an example of five different ones that we cut here, and. Um, <sighs> There's, there's a lot of ways to look at this um, soft and hard plastic. So first of all, know your desired chip flow. Plastics have a natural chip formation. So what I mean by this is their plastics, the way they're designed, the way they're you know, chemically structured, they will naturally cut better with either a 
um, tightly curled chip or a loose curled chip. So when you're selecting a bit to cut your plastic, you need to know what plastic you're using because that plastic has its own you know it has its own qualities it doesn't matter what bit you throw at it that's how it naturally needs to chip so a soft plastic as you can see there I'm looking to get a tightly curled chip and that's what these little blue curls are they're kinda of curled up when they come off there where if I look over here at a hard plastic I got these like blocks or these open curls and that's just a natural chip that's supposed to come off that. So you would need to go and go, okay, I'm cutting HDPE today. Um, is this a hard or a soft plastic? Well, I can, you know, I can go off the um, paperwork that came with it. I could research it. I could ask whatever it needed to be. I go, okay, so this is a soft plastic. So if it's a soft plastic, I'm going to want to try to achieve a tightly curled chip. And this, if you notice, looking at the end of my inside this um, crosshairs here I've got a curled edge and then I've got more of a straight cornered edge so this is more of this one is what we're gonna get into in the next slide is your O flute bit and this would be more of your straight V uh, like your straight end mill with a V on it um, and not, not a V on the end but a V built into the uh, the actual profile so Know your plastic before you go in this. You know, if I have a soft plastic and I start using a wrong bit on it, I'm fighting against the natural chip. So here, let's look at the soft versus hard from a bit's perspective. Same picture, um, a spiral O flute. Now this is some. This is now I'm getting into a bit. I'm getting into terminology from from uh, bit selections, and we'll get into that here in a second. But if I look at the end of that bit this is like if we took a router bit or I'm sorry one of our bits and looked right at the end of it we sighted down it that's what the end of my bit looks like it's got this big long curl it's just off side of center there and that bit is designed to do tightly curled chips which is what soft plastic is designed to be cut and this is actually a, a pretty good bit to use on all plastics. It's kind of be like your, it's your safe bit. You could use that on just about any plastics. It's a bad bit. I mean that I mean bad in a good way. I mean that thing is it is gnarly what it can get in there and do. It's it's real sharp. They've got them with one sided or two sided and um, it's a good good bit. Your other one is a V flute. It's not a V bit like for 3D carving. It's a V flute. It's talking about the flutes on the edge here. So it's a straight bit, but it has a V flute on it. And that one is designed for cutting harder plastics or brittle plastics. So if we look back to some of the ones that we were talking about earlier that are uh, really hard and brittle, like the uh, like the plexiglass, you know, that's going to be a better bit for that. All right, so I'm referring you to, I'm not going to sit here today and uh, I'm not going to sit here and say this bit, this feed, this speed, because that'd be silly for me to even pretend like I know what plastic, what machine, what your exact setup is. So one thing that we have been working with for many years now is a company called Onsroot. They're out of Illinois, just outside Chicago, and they are a manufacturer of precision cutting tools. There's a lot of different ones out there. Uh, Monster, Vortec, Amena, um, Bosch, but we like Onsru. We've been working with them for a long time. They're a good quality bit and they've got good tech support. It's kind of like what we take our pride in is our tech support. These guys have been great. I can always call up there when I have a new material and I could read them the code on the side of whatever the material was, or I could, if I knew exactly what it was, I'd tell them. And they're good at recommending bits. Um, it's not exactly a plastic example, but um, I, I came across a job where I needed to cut some inch and a half thick bamboo, and I called them and told them, "All right, I'm using the brand Plyboo plywood, and it's this thick. Um, I'm able to cut this many inches a second. What do you have for a bit?" They recommended it to me. I ordered it right from them, and they sent it to me. It was down here to North Carolina within two days. It was great. 
So um, I'm going to steer you in this direction when you're looking for a specific bit because, you know, it, it just because a, you know, a, a guy, you know, these would be, a, these are guys that this is what they do. They, they make these bits. They're the ones testing them. They're the ones hearing people in the industry saying yes or no. So they'd be better than, you know, me or somebody else that cuts on plastic every once in a while. But, um, They've got a catalog, and, and you can go right to onsroot.com and download it, if you, or you can request a, a paper copy. But it's, it's nice. You go in there, and I'm just showing you an example of one bit here. This is their 63 series. It gives the different model numbers. It gives a little read-up about it. This is a single flute, solid carbide, upcut spiral O flute. There's a mouthful, right? <laughs> but no, I just kind of break this apart. Single flute, check. It's got one cutter. Spirals around, check. It's an O. I'm looking here at that edge. It goes back to that picture that I had where there's the O flute. And then look down here. They've even got it broke up for you. For Is it a hard plastic or a soft plastic? There's a model number for each one. It gives you the cutting diameter, the length, the flute length, which is the length of the cut, um, the shank diameter, and then overall length is OAL. So they do a real good stuff, and they'll even recommend up here um, different plastics. Under HP, it's telling you your acrylics and your polycarbonates, solid surface, that'd be like a Corian, um, and then a soft plastic, HDPE. Um, oh, there's polycarbonate again. There's different flavors of that. <laughs> so onthrough.com, they've been a, a real good resource as far as um, – bits and let me show you one more slide that goes along with this is um, I've spent a lot of time on there in the last few months just going on there reading stuff just a lot, trying to learn more about bits because the more I learn about them the less chance I have of breaking them so I've been going on there and reading a lot about them but some other the stuff that they have here is um, these guys they'll help you select the cutters to produce optimal finishes they can recommend you feed rates and RPMs uh, they can match, you know, different grades of plastic there are out there and try to get you the best bit. And they're just a real good company all the way around. So, again, onsroo.com is probably the easiest way to get a hold of them. And then here's their 800 number as well down below. So there might be times where you don't... Uh, you know, you have a bit already, and you still want to be able to figure out a chip load on yourself. And just to tell you what chip load again is, that's you're determining the size of the chip that comes off there. You know, like the the size of the piece of sawdust if it was wood. So by getting the proper chip load, you can tell if your machine is cutting at the right feeds and speeds. And built into our software is. Um, if you go into the ShopBot software, you go to Tools, and you go down here to Chip Load Calculator, it's going to bring this up right here. And if I clicked on Chip Load Help, it's going to explain everything there is to uh, basics of chip load and what, what it is. And really all it is is this formula down here. We're trying to figure our feed rate, divide it by the RPM times the number of flutes, and it gives us chip load. And this little calculator figures it out for you. Um, again, that's a training all on its own. So uh, I'm not going to get into that one today, uh, but if you go to shopbottools.com and then you go to training, you'll see all of our online trainings like you're sitting in on today, and then when I get them processed, I post them. Well, here's one here called Tool Database and Bit Selection, where uh, we go in and show you how to calculate uh, tool, c calculate uh, um make a chip load, how to add a bit to your tool database, and, and then there's just some uh, information on there. So um, that's a whole nother baby. There's a whole nother hour right there in itself. And on top of that, to make it even better, in the back of that Onsroot catalog is where there's actually chip load calculators for 10 or 11 different types of material. They've got them for hardwood, softwood, plywoods, hard plastic, soft plastics, aluminum. They've got a chip load calculator in there for each material. So there's, there's definitely ways and information out there to get this stuff. All right, so I guess uh, to kind of wrap this up, first of all, know the type of plastic 
you are using. Is it a hard plastic or a soft plastic? Because the way that plastic has been cooked or formed, it's going to have a natural chip that comes off from it. So you want to make sure you're using the right bit that is is designed for that chip. If you have something that's coming off with a, a real hard plastic, um, you're you know you're not going to want to use the soft plastic bit for it. So know the different types of plastics. Review this. Review you know wh whenever you buy these plastics or you find the manufacturer, the brand, you can go and they'll tell you all kinds of stuff about it. That's where I got most of this information from today. Was I went out and found the sheet of plastic that's laying on our shelf out there and started writing down the different specs and stuff on it. So, um, you know, I can't sit here and say, all right, a uh, uh, quarter inch up spiral bit, three inches a second, 18,000 RPMs, you're ready to cut plastic. It's unfortunately not that simple, but there, it, it is simple enough to know which one of the types you're using, um, knowing that, you know, your, o, your up flute O spiral is pretty much a good all around bit and then you just need to dial in your feed and your speed around that and you can do that by using the chip load calculator so um, I will give you a, a bit that I do prefer to use from Onsrud and that is the 65-023 and that's that up spiral bit that uh, it has the uh, upcut spiral single flute and that's the 65 dash 023. Now we also sell that one here. That's a common bit. So we keep that on, on hand here at ShopBot. So if you ever needed to order one, you could, and you're ordering something from us already, you could uh, go ahead and order that through us. So know your bit. Know your material. You start working with this HDPE or whatever long enough, you're going to just know, you're just going to know to go to this feed and speed and, and know it. Uh, it'll come to you. Trust me. <laughs> I've been doing enough lately that I got it figured out. Um, do your chip load calculator. Get get the right chip load. Uh, you want to prolong the life of that bit and you want to get the best edge quality that you can. And again, test on a scrap piece. Some of these you buy a $300 sheet and I know you're anxious to cut or you got a, a deadline you got to cut by you still want to maybe when you bought that request a 12 inch by 12 inch sample piece so you can practice some feeds and speeds and cutters on that before you tear into your $300 sheet and and it doesn't come out right so uh, um, uh, the other thing I want to tell you is the two different companies that we use for getting plastics, and, and this could all be you know area based, depends on where you're located at. But we use one down here that is called Piedmont Plastics, and they are a local provider of plastics. Uh, I don't know how far they stretch, being again Piedmont, and that's the area that we're located in. And then the other one that we use is called Sabic. Or Sabic, I'm sorry. S A B S A B I C. And they're a lot they're a much larger company and they're located all over the place as well. But between Sabic and uh Piedmont Plastics, I would say that that would be two areas that um that we two companies that we use in this area. And you can go on here and look up all their different types of plastics. You can learn you know what goes into each one of these and uh, there's a whole a whole mess of stuff that go but again I was just trying to get you into an introduction best practices for uh, this plastics and I hope you enjoyed it I'm going to stop the recording now we'll do the Q&A session but um, thank you for thank you for uh, this training <laughs>